we're going to be solving systems of three equations. But before we get started, there's something I need to point out in your book on page 55 on the embedded assessment. I honestly don't remember if I pointed this out, and I don't think I did. We went through and talked about several things. And if you turn to page 55, I want you to write number four is on the next page. Okay, write it or write turn page over, do something. On number four, you're going to have three unknowns, which we can call X, Y, and Z. And to solve that system, you're going to have to write equations, which we will be practicing today. And you're going to be solving a system of, of three equations, which we will be practicing today. And I'm going to ask you on that embedded assessment to write now beside yoga, you're going to be finding the total number of fitness points that are they earned for these different activities. So we're going to let X represent the number of points in yoga, Y for aerobics, and Z for jogging. Okay? And you didn't necessarily have to use X, Y, and Z. You could have used Y for yoga, A for aerobics, and J for jogging. But if you want to be consistent and make it easier because you're used to X, Y, and Z, that would be my suggestion. Most of the time, your embedded assessments will be all on one page. But always turn it over and look. Because even I forgot. That's how many are literally on one page. It's very seldom that you have to turn the page to find the remainder of the embedded assessment. Alright, so we've said that. Now, set that aside. And so now we are ready to look at solving systems of three equations with three unknowns. And you do not need to copy this system down. I'm using it just to talk about the process for a second before we start working the problem. When we solve systems of two equations, we used graphing, substitution, and elimination. Well, I'm hoping you got really good at elimination, especially since you've already done it in Algebra 1. And I want to first describe what we're doing to solve a system before we write the steps, because I don't want anyone when I'm starting to write the steps to go, what? What is she talking about? Okay? Just like on the systems of two, I could choose to eliminate any of the variables. Okay? I could choose to eliminate X's, I could choose to eliminate Y's, I could choose to eliminate Z's. Just because you're used to seeing equations with X and Y, I'm going to pretend that we decided to eliminate Z's, just for the uh, point of discussing this. So describing it verbally, all you have to do is listen. If I take the first two equations and I want to eliminate Z, I would have to multiply every single term in this second equation by a negative 3. 3z and a negative 3z would add to be 0, right? So that term would be gone, and whatever the answer was, you would have x's plus y's, and it would equal some constant term. So you would have an answer that was x, y, and a constant term. Now then, you haven't used this third equation yet. You can use it with either one of these. But if I use it with that middle one, it would be really easy to eliminate z again. You have to eliminate the same variable. Okay? So we used the first two equations and eliminated z. Now I have to use the third. I can use it with either one. But if I choose the second one and multiply by 2, I only had to multiply one equation by something. And a 2z and a negative 2z, those would add to be 0 and just pretend that's not even there, you would have an answer again that has x's in it, y's in it, and a constant. So the two answers you got are now a system of two equations with the variables x, y. You've already solved those. You would follow the process you learned last class 
find what x was, find what y was, and knowing those two answers, you can come back to any of these equations, put the number in you got for x, put the number in that you got for y, z would be the only unknown, and you solve for it. Okay? So there's the description. So now you're going to write the steps down. And these are my notes. It's not straight out of the book. Um, some of the problems may come out of the book, but we I'm planning to work three problems completely, and then we're going to talk about setting up a word problem to make it a system. And that's what we're doing today. And hopefully you've already mastered elimination, and this will be a piece of cake. Step one, use two of the equations and eliminate one of the variables. Let me just turn that over, okay? Use two equations and eliminate one variable. Doesn't matter which one. Step two. Use the equation you haven't used. So there's three. You use two equations on the first step. There has to be one you haven't touched yet. Okay, you have to take that equation. Use the equation you haven't used. <laughs> Sorry. You've now heard my ringtone. I was on the phone earlier and I forgot to silence my phone, but now I have. Sorry about that. And yes, that's my granddaughter's. Uh, my daughter was tickling my granddaughter and she was giggling, so it's pretty cute. All right, use one of the equations you haven't used with one of the others. Doesn't matter which one, but you must eliminate the same variable. If you eliminated x's on step one, you have to eliminate an x here. If you eliminate y, you eliminate y again. If you eliminated a z, you eliminate z again. And eliminate the same variable. So the result of step one is an equation with two variables. The result of step two is an equation with the same two variables. And now we go to step three. Use the answers from step one and two. Use the answers from step one and two and solve that system. That was your assignment last time, so you should be good at it. Use the answers from step one and two and solve that system. So whichever two variables that you solved for, you now have two numbers. Step four, use the two answers from step three. Use the two answers from step three to find the value of to find the value of the eliminated variable. So that means you had to go back to one of the original equations where you had all three variables. There's one last step. Write your answer as an ordered triple. X comma Y comma Z. Write your answer as an ordered triple. X comma Y comma Z.
All right, so like I said, we're going to work three problems. And so I'm going to set this sheet aside and write down the system for problem number one. And beside each of my lines, I'm going to write first, second, and third. And again, that wasn't that important when you were doing systems of two, so some of you may or may not have done it. But when you're trying to solve a system of three, if you're just multiplying in your head and writing down an equation and you've already multiplied by something and you can't even look back to, to visually double check, or if you're asking me where you've made a mistake because you can't get it to work out right, if I can't see where the work's coming from, I'm having to do your math work backwards and it takes me a while to work through a system of three, as you'll see when I get here and we start doing one to try to find out where you were having trouble. All right, number one. And I should be able to get two problems side by side. That's my goal anyway. So here's the first equation, which we will call the first equation. It has a 2x plus y minus z equals 4. The second equation, negative 2x plus y plus 2z equals 6. And every time I copy down a problem, I look back one time real quick. Negative 2x plus y plus 2z equals 6. Because the last thing you want to do, and every year, it's not just one person. I have several people. They'll start copying one equation, and accidentally their eyes fall on the, the second or third one. And they have part of two equations that weren't what the original problem was. And then they're not able to work it. So double check. The third equation starts with an x plus 2y plus z equals 11. Now then, just like the system of 2, you can choose what variables you want to eliminate. And any one of these variables would be easy to el eliminate. If you look at x's, if I added these two together, I don't have to multiply by anything for x to eliminate. But when I get to this one, I will. On the y's, I would have to multiply one of these by a negative if I chose to eliminate y's. And then when I got to this one, one of these would have to be multiplied by a negative 2. For the last one, if I use the first two equations, I'd have to multiply the first one by 2 to make these opposite. And then notice the first and the last are opposites. So you just have to use all three equations ultimately, but be sure you eliminate the same variable. I'm going to choose to eliminate x's. So I'm going to use the first and the second equation and just add them. So I'm going to write the first and the second, and I write 2x plus y minus z equals 4, and negative 2x plus y plus 2z equals 6. And I'm going to add those. When I add, the x's are eliminated. When I add the y's, I get 2y. When I add z's, negative z and a positive 2z gives me 1z. And the constant term, 4 plus 6 is 10. Now, just because there's going to be a lot of writing on this, um, you could use a different color if you want to make it stand out. You don't have to, but I'm going to put a box around it just so that when I go looking for it here in a minute, it's going to be easy to find. This is step one. We've taken two of the equations and we eliminated x. The ste second step said to use the equation you haven't used yet. Well, I have to use the third one. And it says I can use it with either one of these. Well, I need to multiply it by a 2 or a negative 2 to make it eliminate. It depends on which one I want to use. I'm going to choose to take the second equation as is and take the third and multiply it by a, by a 2. 
since um, this is already a negative 2x, when I multiply this by 2, I don't have to worry about distributing a negative sign on anything. So I'm going to copy the second equation. Negative 2x plus y plus 2z equals 6. And I double check each term to make sure I did my eyes didn't stray. Going to the third one, I need to multiply it by 2. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2y is 4y. 2 times z is 2z. And yes, I always put that little line through my z so it doesn't start looking like the number 2. And 2 times 11 is 22. And I'm ready to add again. When I add, x's are eliminated. That's exactly what we wanted. The y's, y plus 4y is 5y. 2z plus 2z is 4z. And 6 plus 22 is 28. That's the end of step 2. So I've used all three equations. I used 1 and 2, and then I used 2 and 3. If I had 1 and 2, I could have used 1 and 3, but I had to use 3 because I hadn't used it yet. Now then, this is a system of two equations. We want to write these. I'm going to write these side by side so we can see that this is the next system we're working with. 2y plus z equals 10 and 5y plus 4z equals 28. So now this is the system that I am solving. When I solve this system, I will have a number for x, I'm sorry, for y and z, and I will be able to go back up to one of these equations, put the values for y and z in, and find x. So for right now, we're not going to worry about what's up here. We've copied these down correctly. We double checked our work on the way. I'm going to solve this system. So when I look at this, I could choose to eliminate y's or z's. If I eliminate y's, the smallest number that 2 and 5 both go into is 10. I will have to multiply both equations by something. But if I want to eliminate z, I can multiply that first equation by a negative 4 and make my z's eliminate. So I'm going to do that, and I wrote in a different color out to the side what I was multiplying that equation by. So I'm going to come out down below and write the result. Negative 4 times 2y is a negative 8y. Negative 4 times z is a negative 4z. Negative 4 times 10 is a negative 40. And write the second equation, 5y plus 4z equals 28. Now I'm ready to add and eliminate those z's. Negative 8y and a positive 5y gives me a negative 3y. z's add to be 0. A negative 40 and a positive 28 is a negative 12. Divide both sides by negative 3. And again, if you need to write it to be sure you're getting your sign correct, then do so. If I divide by a negative 3, I get y by itself. Negative 12 divided by a negative 3 is a positive 4. If you mess up this sign here, the rest of your work's going to be wrong. Okay? So you would get some pretty good credit for knowing you had to use all three different equations and you knew that you had to come down here and solve the system. But if this is a 10 point problem and you get the first variable wrong, you're going to get the next two wrong and you'd probably get 7 out of 10 points, but you're not going to get all of them if you're not careful with that sign. All right, still within this system, I know why I want to find z. I'm going to choose this first equation. Instead of 2 times y, it is 2 times 4. plus z equals 10. 
Well, 2 times 4 is 6, plus z equals 10. If I subtract, sorry, I can't even multiply, 2 times 4 is 8. I told you it wouldn't be long before you'd see me make a mistake, but I'm always looking while I'm writing and talking, trying to catch my mistakes, so hopefully I do. If I subtract 8 on both sides, I will have z equals 2. So now I know y and z. I can go back to any of the original equations. On the original equations, I had my x's. Well, this one that only has a coefficient of 1, so this is the one that I'm going to choose to use. I could use any of them. But I'm going to go down here and write x plus 2y plus z equals 11. That's the equation I chose. And now in place of y, I'm going to put 4. In place of z, I'm going to put 2. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 2 equals 11. Sorry, I was already doing work in my head. Uh, 8 plus 2 is 10, so I have x plus 10 equals 11. That is an 11 right there. Subtract 10 on both sides, and x is equal to 1. Your answer cannot be left like this. I expect to see an ordered triple, x comma y comma z, x is 1, y is 4, z is 2. How do you know you're right? Go back to each equation and you can do mental math, putting a 1 in place of x, a 4 in place of y, a 2 in place of z, and the left side will equal the right side. Since it's kind of hard to slide the paper back and forth, let's just look at this one equation. If I put a 1 here, I get 1. 2 times the y value of 4 gives me 8. And a 2 here. So 1 plus 8 is 9. Plus 2 does give me 11. And it will work when you check it with the other two equations as well. Okay? So this is the solution when you have this system. All right, let's try a second one, number two. And again, I'm going to have whatever equation I write first, second, and third. For the first one, I have 3x plus y plus z equals 14. For the second one, I have a negative x plus 2y minus 3z equals negative 9. For the third one, I have a 5x minus y plus 5z equals 30. Again, it is in your best interest to check every sign, every coefficient on your equations before you get started. And I've double checked mine. Um, just to take a break for a second, remember that if you are working along, even more so than with the systems of two, somebody of yours, if you were working at home and you called someone up and said, hey, have you done problem number one yet? And they said, well, I was just working on that. Well, if you're, tr and you made a mistake someplace, and that's a lot of work, okay? And you're trying to figure out where that mistake is. Well, if their work doesn't match yours, if they didn't eliminate the same variable at the same time in the same way, nothing is going to match until you get to the end. But if you both work it correctly, you'll get the same answer. I have had students that chose to work with a buddy, and they chose, kind of like we're choosing in class, to, as a group, eliminate the same variable the same way. And in that way, it can give you some confidence if you need confidence as you're moving forward. OK? 
Okay, so just a suggestion. If you're working with a buddy on these, you might agree to work it the same way and whether you're working it over the phone or whatever and just compare notes. All right, so it would be pretty easy to eliminate X, Y's, or Z's. Looking at these, which variable do you think I chose and I thought would be the easiest to eliminate? Well, if you said Y's, you are correct. The first and third, I can just add those and they will eliminate without having to multiply by anything. Then when I get around to using the second equation, only one equation is going to have to be multiplied by something. So I'm going to write the first one and the third one so I can add those. I have a 3x plus y plus z equals 14. And the third one, a 5x minus y plus 5z equals 30. And we're ready to add those. 3x plus 5x is 8x. When we add, the y's are eliminated just like we wanted. When we add 1z plus 5z, I get a positive 6z. And the constant term, 14 and 30, is 44. So here is my first equation. What equation must I use this next time? If you said equation 2, you are correct. I haven't used it yet. It has to be used. What variable am I going to eliminate? I eliminated y the first time. I have to eliminate the y's. So if I'm going to eliminate the y, I could use it with the first equation and multiply by a negative 2, or I could use it with the last equation and multiply by a positive 2. I can tell you, as many years as I've been doing math, I can make a mistake just as easy as the next person. I'm going to choose to use that third equation and multiply by 2 because then I'm not worrying about the signs as I distribute also. <clears throat> so copying the second equation. Negative x plus 2y minus 3z equals a negative 9. The third equation. Multiplying 2 times 5x, I get 10x. Multiplying 2 by a negative y, I get a negative 2y. Multiplying 2 by 5z, I get 10z. And multiplying 2 by 30, I get 60. And I'm ready to add. A negative 1x and a positive 10x gives me 9x. The y's add to be 0. z negative 3z and a positive 10z gives me a positive 7z and it equals 51. So now in those two boxes this is the answer for step one, this is the answer for step two, this is the system that I have to solve now. So I'm going to write 8x plus 6z equals 44, and below it I'm going to write 9x plus 7z equals 51. This is the system that I must solve. I'm not worried about any of this as long as I've copied these equations down and I worked carefully to get there. This is the system I'm solving now. If I want to eliminate x's, the smallest value that 8 and 9 go into is 72. For the z's, the smallest number that 6 and 7 go into is 42. But 42 is a little bit smaller, so I'm going to choose to eliminate the z's. And I'm just going to write directly beside it what I'm going to multiply by. I'm going to choose to multiply this first equation by a negative 7. That will make this negative 42z. 
and the second equation I'm going to multiply by a positive 6 to make it a positive 42z. So you can see the numbers aren't always nice little one digit numbers. Okay, that's we wanted to get to an example like this one. So distributing negative 7 times 8x is a negative, oops, I'm going to change back to my dark pen here, is a negative 56x. Negative 7 times a positive 6z is a negative 42z. Negative 7 times a positive 44. Well, positive times a negative is a negative. And when I multiply 7 times 4, I get 28. Carry a 2. 7 times 4 is 28 again, and 2 is 30. So a negative 308. Going down to the second equation and distributing 6 all the way across. 6 times 9x is 54x. 6 times a positive 7z is a positive 42z. And a positive 6 times a positive 51. Well, 6 times 1 is 6. And 5 times 6 is 30. It's a positive 306. And I'm ready to add. When I add negative 56x and a positive 54x, I get a negative 2x. The z's add to be 0. Constant term, negative 308 and a positive 306 is a negative 2. Divide both sides of the equation by a negative 2. x is by itself. Negative 2 divided by a negative 2 is a positive 1. We have found x, but we're still using this system. We don't leave this system until we know the numerical value for both of the variables in this system. You can choose to use either equation. I'm just going to choose the first one. Instead of an 8 times x, it is an 8 times 1 plus 6z equals 44. 8 times 1 is just 8 plus 6z equals 44. Subtract 8 to get 6z by itself. 44 minus 8 is 36. Divide both sides by 6. z is by itself because 6 divided by 6 is 1. 36 divided by 6 is 6. I now know x and I know z. I need y. In the very first equation, the y had a coefficient of positive 1. So I'm going to choose that one just because it's a little less work. So I'm going to write this equation down here. We have 3x plus y plus z equals 14. And now I'm going to substitute in the values that we have for x and z x is 1, so instead of 3 times x, it is 3 times 1, plus my unknown y, plus my value of z, which is 6, is supposed to equal 14. Well, 3 times 1 is just 3, plus y, plus 6 equals 14. Combining the like terms, I have y plus 9 equals 14. If I subtract 9 on both sides of the equation, I get y equals a positive 5. So what should your order triple look like? Well, x is first, y is second, and it was a 5, and z is last, it is a 6. And again, just like before, you can go back and check by substituting these values into your equation. Okay. All right, number three. And the last one, we're working all the way through, so pay close attention if you're still struggling. And you don't get better without practice. Math is not a spectator sport. You have to get out there and put forth some effort and try to get good at something. So I'm going to write first, second, and third. And I said this is the last. This is the last one we're working all the way through and then we're going to look at how to just set up a one word problem. That won't take long at all. 
our first equation on this last one is 4x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1. Next I have 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals negative 14. Be sure if you write negative, make sure you can see that it's negative. And I double checked all my signs and terms there. The third one, 6x minus y plus 4z equals negative 1. Okay, so again, if you are working on your own, you could look at these and choose any variable to eliminate. I'm going to choose to eliminate y again, and I like it because on the others, I'm going to have to multiply whatever equations I choose, both equations have to be multiplied by something. But using y, since the, even though this is a negative one, it's a coefficient of one, so I can easily eliminate y's when I pair this equation with either one of these, and I'll only have to multiply one equation by something. I'm going to start with the first equation and the third equation. The first equation has a coefficient of two, so if I multiply the last equation by 2, it will become a negative 2, and it will be eliminated. Okay, so writing the first equation, 4x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1. The third equation multiplied by 2. 2 times 6x is 12x. 2 times a negative y is a negative 2y, exactly what we wanted and 2 times 4z is 8z, and 2 times a negative 1 is a negative 2, and I'm ready to add. When I add the x's, 4x plus 12x is 16x. When I add the y's, they add to be 0, they are eliminated. 3z plus 8z is a positive 11z, and 1 plus a negative 2 is a negative 1. We've done step 1. We used the first and the third equation and we eliminated y. I must use the second equation, so I'm going to go ahead and write it. I must eliminate y. My second equation has a coefficient of negative 3. That means I want this one to be a positive 3. So when I write down my third equation, I'm going to have to multiply by a negative 3 to make the y's eliminate. So I'm going to have to really be careful and watch my signs all the way across. Copying the second equation, I have 2x minus 3y plus 5z equals a negative 14. I double check to make sure I copied it right. Next, <clears throat> negative 3 times the positive 6x is negative 18x. Negative 3 times a negative y is a positive 3y, exactly what we wanted. Negative 3 times 4z is a negative 12z. Negative 3 times a negative 1 is a positive 3. And I'm ready to add. When I add 2 and negative 18 give me a coefficient of negative 16x. When I add the y's they are eliminated. When I add the z's, 5 and negative 12 gives me a negative 7z. And negative 14 plus 3 is a negative 11. 
I have completed step two. I've now used all three equations and I have two equations with the same two variables. So I'm going to write those side by side because this is now the system that I will solve. <coughs> Notice anything nice about these equations? Yeah, look at that. They were really nice to us. When I, I don't even have to multiply anything. You're going to come across problem. I have seen people that had an X and a negative X, and they couldn't decide it to add those together and eliminate X. They had to multiply by something first. Well, no, you don't have to. If they are opposites and they're going to add to be zero, you're good. I'm not even going to rewrite them. I'm going to go ahead and add. X's are gone. 11Z and negative 7Z gives me 4Z. Constant term. Negative 12. Divide both sides of that equation by 4, and I get negative 12 divided by 4 is a negative 3. Am I finished with this system? No, I have z. I need x. I'm going to go to this first equation. doesn't matter which one. I'm just using the first one. 16x plus 11 times z, which is a negative 3, should equal a negative 1. 16x, 11 times negative 3 is a negative 33, equals a negative 1. Add 33 to both sides to get the term with x by itself. Negative 1 plus 33 is a positive 32. Divide both sides by 16. When I divide on the left, x is by itself. On the right, 32 divided by 16 is 2. So now I have z and I have x. I am missing y. It does not matter which equation you choose. I'm going to choose the first one that was way up here at the top. I'm going to copy this problem down, substitute in the answers I have, and find the one I don't have. The equation that I pointed at is 4x plus 2y plus 3z equals 1. We know that, or we believe, x is 2. So I'm going to replace x with 2. We don't know why. Plus 3 times z. Well, we believe z to be negative 3. And it's supposed to equal 1. So working on that. 4 times 2 is 8, plus 2y. 3 times a negative 3 is a negative 9 equals 1. A positive 8 and a negative 9 is a negative 1. So I have 2y minus 1 equals 1. To solve, I need to move that 1 to the other side by adding. I add 1 on the left, it's gone. I add 1 on the right, I get 2. Divide both sides by 2 to get y by itself. 2 divided by 2 is 1. Write your ordered triple. And hopefully you wrote 2, 1, negative 3. Don't go to all that trouble and get lose a point because you don't put it in the right order. This is the one and only answer I'm looking for. This is the work that you're going to have to show me when you solve systems of three manually. You will learn a different way of solving them. You have to be able to show me this. Next time your check for understanding is going to be one problem that is a system of three. Okay? Because I'm not going to give you five of these to solve for a quiz. One. All right, the next thing I want you to do is turn to page 40. Here's what page 40 looks like. We're going to go through the process of setting up those equations. And when we finish doing that, we will be finished with our notes for today. So on page 40, 
It says a farmer plans to grow corn, soybeans, and wheat on this farm. They're asking you to let C represent the corn. Okay, not a big surprise. Uh, to represent the number of acres planted with corn. S represents the number planted with soybeans. Now then, before I write an S, I'm going to tell you that for years I have been making a cursive S because a little S looks too much like a 5. If you want to change it to a different variable altogether, that's fine with me. But this is my C, this is my S, and wheat, the number of acres of wheat, is going to be represented by W. Now then, the farmer has 500 acres. And remember, this is how many acres of corn, how many acres of soybean, and how many acres of wheat. He has 500 acres to plant with corn, soybeans, and wheat. Write an equation using C, S, and W that models this information. Well, if these are all counting the d number of acres for each one of these types, and he has a total of 500, your first equation should be the number of acres of corn, C, plus the number of acres of soybeans, S, plus the number of acres of wheat, W, should equal the total of 500 acres. I never have anyone that misses that problem. Okay? Don't ever look at a word problem and go, oh, I don't even want to read it. That's way too easy. Okay? Now then, growing an acre of corn costs $390. So I'm going to put a C by that number. That's how much it costs to for an acre. One acre is $390. For soybeans, it's $190, so I'm going to put an S by the soybeans cost, $190. And the wheat is $170. I'll put a little W right there. They tell you his budget is $119,000 to spend on growing crops. Well, remember, C tells me how many acres. If I want to know how much money he spends on his acres of corn, it is a total of $390 multiplied by the number of acres. If he had 5 acres, it would be 5 times 390. If he has 20 acres, it would be 20 times 390. Whatever the number of acres, this is how much it costs for each one plus, because we're talking about the total budget, uh, $190 for each acre of soybeans. So it's 190 multiplied by how many acres he plants with soybeans, plus $170 multiplied by the number, by W, the number of acres he's going to plant with wheat. So this is how much money he spends to grow the corn, this is how much money he spends to grow the, so grow the soybean. This is how much he spends on the wheat. And it equals a total of $119,000. So there's our second equation. It is this next equation you have to be careful of. And I may give you a few seconds to see if you can get the equation on your own. Because there's a common mistake that people make. It says the farmer plans to grow twice as many acres of wheat as corn. Write an equation in terms of C and W that models this information. So you can either pause your video or I'm just going to stop talking for a second here. But since everybody's watching the video, I will go ahead and do this. It says he plans to grow twice as many acres of wheat. So which is he growing more of, wheat or corn? Obviously more wheat. They want an equation. Your equation has to tell me what equals what in relation to corn and wheat. He is growing twice as many acres of wheat. So he's growing more wheat. It is corn that has to be multiplied by 2 in order for it to equal wheat. I have students that get here and they still go, what? Well, let's just pretend, let's go out to the side, and let's pretend that he was going to plant 40 acres 
of wheat. And it says he's planting twice as many acres of wheat as corn. That would mean he was planting 20 acres of corn. So notice you had to multiply the amount of corn by 2 in order for it to equal the wheat. So sometimes putting real numbers in helps you figure out what to do with the variables to write that equation. So this equation doesn't look at all like the systems we just solved. It only has two variables in it. But if you were actually solving, it's pretty nice. So let me show you. Right here, it wants you to write your equations that we wrote. Uh, on your embedded assessment, you'll have to do this also. Corn plus soybeans plus wheat equals 500. 390 corn plus 190 soybean plus 170 wheat equals $119,000. So notice it's always our variables on the left and it equals the constant term. Well, when I get to this last equation, if you're just asked to write the equations like they are, you could write 2C equals W. But if I'm thinking of in terms of solving, I'm going to line up my like terms. I'm going to say 2C. There's not any soybeans. I would have subtracted W to move it to the other side. Minus W equals, and what does it equal? A zero. Notice if I was, and again, I would be fine if all they asked you to do was write the equations if you wrote this one. But if you're getting ready to solve, they have to be with the like terms lined up in order to eliminate and solve your system. Notice that since there's no soybeans here, it actually saves me a step in the solving. I can eliminate S here add those equations and my answer will have just C and W in it and I can use it with this equation and eliminate my next variable and solve my system. All right, that is your notes. Um, work carefully. Be sure you practice because both on your check for understanding and on your test, you will have to solve a system of three equations and three variables showing your work and putting your answer as an ordered triple. Have a great day.